Welcome, everyone. How about this crowd? Great job. To, thank you to all of you. A lot of young faces out there. Obviously, a lot of support for our honorees today, so we're really looking forward to this. I want to bring up a, a young man who I know played for one of the honorees uh, here today. Uh, Rene Rancourt could not be here. I think this is the first year he's, he couldn't be here. He'll be back for our 20th anniversary next year. Uh, but I think we have a pretty good replacement for him. Mr. Frankie Lonigan. Come on up, buddy. Oh, God, get pumped. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last leaving whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air came through through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet Rancourt's in trouble, that's all I have to say. Frankie, great job. Another round of applause. This breakfast started 19 years ago. Whitey and Louie and I started talking about some of the people that had toiled on the fields and the courts uh, of this city for so many years that no one had appropriately said thank you to. And we had this crazy idea of doing a youth sports volunteer recognition breakfast. And we pulled it off the first year, and we've been going 19 years ever since. I want to ask all the past honorees, please stand up so we can give you a round of applause, those who are, have been recognized in the past by Galuccio Associates. Thank you very much. At this time, I want to ask Michael Danlick uh, to come up. Uh, Louis is not here this year. I want to invite Whitey to come on up uh, and introduce the board of directors and, and say a few words. Let's give it up for Whitey. I just want to say thank you uh, to all of you who came out uh, to support the breakfast. And I want to say the, uh, the board, it's not easy. Every year we have to make some choices, tough choices. There are some incredible people working with the youth of Cambridge uh, in the sports arenas around the city. And um, I want to thank the board. Uh, our MVP this year uh, was not with us. She was not available. Uh, that's Nancy Galluccio. She's the one who, who toils every year, puts this thing together, keeps us in line. Most importantly, keeps that guy in line. And um, uh, she wasn't, she wasn't uh, able to be with us, but uh, through a lot of phone conversations and her getting us together, uh, I want to thank uh, my sister, Laura McGaffigan. I want to thank uh, Lisa Galluccio, uh, Louis Di Pasquale, Anthony, um, for putting this together 19 years strong, and we're looking forward to a bigger and better event next year for our 20th. But I also want to say thank you to all, all the honorees tonight um, or this afternoon, and just uh, I want to say thank you to them for their hard work and this, it's been a long time coming for a few of the people on, uh, on the dais up here. And um, you're going to hear some pretty good stories. So enjoy the breakfast, and thank you all. And let's give it up for Whitey. Back in 1993, when Pop Warner, we, we were Joe Grassi, Paul Ryder, um, myself, I say Donnie Harding, 
Donny Harding were trying to get Pop Warner restarted in the city. Whitey said, Let, let's get them some money, and we threw a party at the West Cambridge VFW. Um, you know, uh, Sicilian pizza slices and collecting 10 bucks at the door, and that's how this organization got started. So Whitey, your vision, your passion. Whitey, when Whitey has an idea, he doesn't accept no for an answer. He loves the challenge, and uh, so Whitey, thank you for inspiring us to do this. Tony V, warm us up with some good jokes and humor. Tony V. Thank you very much. I don't know what to say. If somebody in the audience, uh, after 19 years, has been working with children and you haven't gotten an award, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> I think they pretty much got to anybody who ever walked through a field in Cambridge. So if you've not received an award, look inside and say to yourself, what am I doing wrong? That after 19 years, they own about 20 people a year. I can't do that math, but it's a lot of people. You're doing something wrong. No, you're all very dedicated. And, and I ask myself this question, as you are asking yourself the same question that I am asking myself right now, why is this man here? No reason. I don't know why I keep getting uh, asked back. You obviously don't like me. I'm, I'm somewhat of an anomaly <laughs> to the whole sports thing. You know, I, I, I tell you this, I, I did play sports. Uh, I, uh, I still do. I play uh, slow pitch softball because it's what old fat guys do when they don't, can't do anything else. And uh, does anybody play softball? Are we gonna offend anyone if I goof on softball? Do you play softball? Yeah. Have you ever struck out? Yeah, no, I have. <laughs> this, this is how you know you really got, it's time to hang up your cleats, fellas. And most of you are a lot younger than me, and you say, like, I can keep going forever. It's about 62, you can't. You just quit. I, let me explain it to you if you don't understand what striking out in softball means. It means you miss something the size of a melon coming at you at about a mile an hour. The only thing worse is if, if you struck out playing kickball. That would be the only thing. Let me explain it to you. Now, I know you, you kids know sports, right? A, a fastball comes at you like this, and you can miss it. It happens all the time. A fastball comes at you like that, right? And you can miss it. A slow pitch softball comes at you like this. Do, do you see what I'm saying there? Do you understand? At the height, at the pinnacle of a slow pitch softball, you could decide to change bats. <laughs> you could go to the bench, get the bat, discuss it with your teammates, walk back to the plate and still hit the same pitch. And I missed. And when I missed, I, I, I spun around and I fell and I, did you ever hurt something on yourself that you don't even know what it is? No. no. Well, hang in there, you will. I, I believe that's the youngest heckler I have ever had. I we've reached a new, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we reached a new level. Some of them, maybe Charlestown, I don't know. So in conclusion, kids, stay in school, eat your vegetables, do everything that these people say, and one day when you're as old as me, you will not be standing in front of people like you <laughs> telling jokes that you don't get. <laughs> if that's not an incentive for a happy, productive life, I don't know what is. I thank you again for having me. It's always a pleasure and uh, continued success. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony V. Now, <laughs> I'd like to have come up uh, the mayor of Cambridge uh, to give us a welcome uh, and say a few words. Come on up, Mr. Mayor.
20 minute stand up routine here. <laughs> I want to uh, just um, say, uh, first of all, to all of the recipients here today, on behalf of all of my colleagues in, in City Life here, congratulations and thank you for the great work that you all have done on behalf of the young people of the City of Cambridge. How about, how about a big hand for all of these? I, I would just add that we are very, very lucky to live in a community where youth sports and youth activities are really a vital part of uh, everyday life for, for young people in this community. And the success of the youth programs that are in Cambridge are because of the volunteers, the people who step forward and help out on a daily basis. And it's a big, big commitment. And so on behalf of all of us, I thank you for the commitment that you have made to making Cambridge a better city and a city where young people can grow up and, and really be able to find themselves. And that's a, that's a big, big deal in, in a, a young person's life. And, and, and I know when I look out here at these young folks and the many young folks that are here today, that the coaches and the people that, that have helped them along the way, they will never forget the impact that each and every one of you have had on their lives. So I just want to say thank you and, and uh, best wishes from all of us. And I know that you're, you're going to have a list here. I know I saw City Councilor and State Representative Tim Toomey, who's here this morning, School Committee Member Fred Fantini, and is, is that who I saw? And that's who I saw. So. <laughs> I want to, Mr. Mayor, thank you, and, and, and uh, as is uh, State Representative and Councilor Toomey and School Committee Member Fantini, the Mayor's a big supporter of youth sports, so wanna, not just in government, but through, uh, through uh, his own donations and support over the years, so I want to say thank you. And uh, City Councilor Toomey and the Mayor have resolutions here for the awardees, so we'll give you those when we, uh, when we give the, uh, the plaques. Um, at this time, Somebody that I know we're all real proud of, and we hear him on the radio, see him on TV, uh, we know he's all Cambridge. Brought the old time baseball game to Cambridge as, as somebody who thinks Cambridge has probably the greatest baseball tradition in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Steve memorialized that with our old time baseball game. Let's give it up for Cambridge's own Steve Buckley. Thank you. So I, I do want to thank you all for inviting me again to the 19th Annual Gallucci Associates Youth Sports Volunteer Recognition Breakfast on June 27, 2015 at the Royal Sinestra Hotel. Uh, I've been to this event uh, most of the last 19 years, uh, basically because you can't say no to Anthony. And I got to tell you, there is nothing like getting up at 7 a.m. on a Saturday and coming out to the Royal Sinestra Hotel each year for the Galuccio Associates Youth Sports Volunteer Recognition Breakfast. So it is the, the, the highlight of my year. And before I go, I gotta tell you, I, I loved it when Anthony got up and talked about Whitey, Louie, and I. It, it sounds like the Bowery Boys in the old days, those old movies. There, there, there is something wrong with today's culture, and I'm not a big old days kind of a guy to the degree that things are much better, but I will tell you this, when I hear Anthony talk about Whitey and Louie, it, it does call to mind the fact that we had better nicknames when I was a kid. And Richie Ferreira down the end, we both graduated from Longfellow School in 1980. You know, we had Killer Coakley, and we had Ting, and we had Fitzy, and Duffmeister, and Steve McMahon was chief, and, and like kids today don't have nicknames. Everybody's Connor and Isaac and stuff like that. We, we, we especially in Cambridge, we, is there a Connor on Isaac that I do? Oh. <laughs> We had good nicknames when I was there. Do you have a nickname? Isaac. All right. So we, we did have better nicknames. But anyway, I want to tell you, in all seriousness, I, I do look forward to this breakfast every year. I love seeing Paul Ryder and all the people I see. Every, Louis, where's Louis? There's no Louis De Pasquale? Oh. Part of the routine is making fun of Louis, so I'm sorry he's not here. But again, thank you very much for inviting me. I look forward to it. And <clears throat> I must plug the annual Old Time Baseball game, August 27th, St. Peter's Field in Cambridge. 
We are doing it, the old time uniforms, you've all been familiar with it, I hope. Um, this year we're playing the game as a benefit for the National Technical Institute for the Deaf. Uh, we intend to raise enough money to provide a full college scholarship with match ma matching federal funds. Uh, the city manager would know how that game works. Uh, we're going to provide a full scholarship for a uh, hearing impaired student from the state of Massachusetts, from the Commonwealth, to go to the Rochester Institute of Technology. And I've only mentioned this once. We haven't, yeah, that's good news. And, um, and I haven't really announced this yet, but I'll announce it this morning in all seriousness. We, we always try to tweak the game every year by having somebody special participate. And if you can believe this, August 27, 7 o'clock, St. Peter's Field, the starting pitcher for our game is going to be 1967 American League Cy Young Award winner, Jim Lonborg. Wow. He is, uh, <clears throat> Jim is, um, as some of you know, a dentist. He's a dentist now, he lives south of Boston. He's 73 years old. He is a phenomenally conditioned athlete. He, uh, I talked to him on the phone a few weeks ago. He came to us with this uh, because Skip Flanagan, who was born what they call profoundly deaf, uh, and framing him. He's one of our big honorees this year. He's a student at RIT. And um, Skip has known Jim Longborg since he was a small child. And when Jim heard that Skip was going to be playing in his final edition of our game, Jim got in touch with the Flanagan family. They got in touch with me. I talked with Jim. He's, he's taking this very seriously. He's probably going to pitch just to one or two batters. And the deal is that once he warms up, he needs to come in the game right away because his arm will tighten up. But he is very serious about this. And he is going to be on the mound on August 27th. So if you want to see one of the great pitchers in Red Sox history in a Red Sox uniform, a former Cy Young Award winner, get out to St. Peter's Field on the 27th. Thank you very much, folks. Buck, stay right there. Stay right there. By the way, I heard Anthony Cucinati say, I think I could hit Lomberg now. This could be a chance. He's about 70. Uh, I want to introduce the scholarship winners. As you know, we've been doing scholarships for a number of years. Two years ago, we named them uh, in honor of Billy Ewing, a great athlete out of Cambridge, one of those athletes that I think left a legacy, um, got looked at by a lot of Division I programs to play basketball, chose to go to Tufts for the education, graduated, he was an All-American and went on to be very successful in, in corporate life. But one of those guys that chose school first, uh, North Carolina was looking at him and he, he wanted to go to Tufts and he did and just, he was a phenomenal guy. Um, for those of you who know Billy, I know, you know what I'm talking about. We actually honored Billy here um, about 17 years ago when he started the Tomorrow Stars Camp uh, with Edge. Um, I want to introduce the Billy Ewing scholarships at this time. I want to have Philip Gaines, M Maya Halpern Adams, Carlos Aquina, and y y Yamisi Benador. Come on up. I know many of you have heard about the success of, of the Cambridge Girls Track program. One of the programs, probably the program that has continued to be consistently great. Uh, in the city. Jamal Prince is here. Give it up for Jamal. Uh, Tiani Boone, an alumni who was a phenomenal runner at BC. She couldn't be here this morning, but she's been very helpful. Uh, Maya is attending Temple University. Uh, Yamisi, UMass Amherst. Philip Gaines, former player for the West Cambridge Dodgers and a, a confessed Louis D. killer, by the way. <laughs> Philip Gaines. <laughs> Phil, Philip's going to Assumption. I want to mention uh, Babe Ruth, senior Babe Ruth, uh, catcher for the high school team and been with the base program for a number of years. And I know how proud uh, his parents are. We're very proud. He's actually my my assistant uh, this year for the Pirates, and he was phenomenal. Uh, next young man, I've known him since he was like seven years old. By the time he was 11, he couldn't, 
this isn't, I'm not trying to make fun of you. He was too big to play Pop Warner because of the weight limits. Diane worked really hard to get the high school uh, to, um, excuse me, Pop Warner, yes, no, the high school to accommodate eighth graders. He was one of the first eighth graders to be able to play on the freshman team. Uh, one of the nicest kids, Carlos has been helping us with our charity events going back 10 years. My mother adores him. Uh, Carlos, you're going to West Hill? Bridgewater State. Carlos Aquino. At this time, I want to start with our coaches award. Why we're honoring Isaiah is not because of his past uh, athletic excellence, but his work with kids. And if you, could see, if you could see his smile on the football field and his humble approach to kids, he doesn't approach it as a guy who played at UConn and why you should listen to him. He approaches it as a kid from North Cambridge who is these kids and conveying the message to them the way he thought it would have been effectively conveyed to him when he was playing. And I've heard more than one kid say, it's nice to have somebody from our neighborhood who came from where we came from coaching us. Uh, we love Isaiah Moore, want to thank him for his work at Cambridge Ringe and Latin. I know many years ahead as a teacher, maybe an administrator, but certainly as a coach, ladies and gentlemen, Isaiah Moore. Um, this is an honor, like, being here as a kid, sitting in one of these tables, looking up here, seeing all the inductees. It's just a, it's a privilege because it takes a lot of work. And I've played many sports. I've played four sports throughout high school. I've done track with Jamal Prince. I've played basketball with Lance Dotton. Um, done football with uh, Kwame Dixon. What a great coach for him. He, he's taught me a lot throughout my life with determination, understanding not only football, but understanding being a, an athlete, I would say, and, and determination to work hard. A little story, my first year, it was, it was pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it was almost like every time Isaiah would get up to bat, it would either be a walk or a strikeout. Like automatically, I think I had two hits the whole season. It might have been 38 games. But if you did walk me, I would steal every base. <laughs> Almost every base, try to steal home, that was me. It's like, oh, please, please, Isaiah. Please, either get a hit, maybe lay a bunt down. Even I might have struck out bunts as well. But um, that feeling wasn't too good, you know? Striking out, it's not fun when you're not doing well in that sport. So that off season, I, just started, I decided to work hard and everything I did. I, I, I went to camps and whatnot. I reached out to people, asked what's wrong with me. Can you fix my mechanics? The next year, I ended up doing well. I ended up being an all-star, 14-year-old all-star. I went from striking out almost every time I played to batting top four. And from there, I continued on. Um, I only went so far because I didn't work out and uh, I had shoulder problems, so I had to give up baseball. I didn't want to continue with that. And then I played football. I don't know why I did that, but <laughs> Um, then I had to make a decision whether I wanted to do basketball or football, and pretty much I decided, hey, I'm not the tallest guy in the world, so I'm going to decide to play football. I went to prep school. They straightened me in line academically, first and foremost, as well as on the field. Then I was fortunate enough to get the scholarship to go to UConn, where I was ready. I was ready to continue my career. I ended up being a three-year starter there. Unfortunately, I had a, spine, a spinal injury, scoliosis. I was diagnosed as a kid in eighth grade, but I just still decided to play football and take that risk. Um, I had spinal surgery last year. Not to say don't play football or anything, it's not dangerous or not, but yes, I did have spine surgery last year. Um, and it kind of affected me in my coaching ability because I want to give back as, as much as I, I've received from all these former coaches that I've had, I want to give back to all you guys pretty much. So I'm taking everything that they have given me, taking my formula and giving it back to you guys. And so far it's been successful. That's why I'm up here, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> Yet again, I don't want to take up everyone's time, but I'm also thankful for Anthony for giving me this award. 
I'm also thankful for everyone in the Pop Warner program helping build this town. Maybe we'll get some football championships in there. I know we have the baseball and the basketball and the hockeys and whatnot, but we're working at it, right? Um, so stay in school, right? Stay positive, grades up, right? Because you can't go anywhere without the grades. I'm a teacher, so I know, all right? So stay positive, all right? Keep eating your vegetables, grow strong, make sure you stretch, all right? Listen to your parents, stretch, yeah, stretch. Oh, I'm stiff, I'm a big stiffy right now. But I want to thank you for having me here. Anthony, thank you again for having me for this award. I appreciate it. Thank you, have a blessed day, everyone. Thank you, Isaiah. I'm gonna go a little bit uh, out of order, but do we have any, any young, young people who played the Mayor's Cup this weekend? Why don't you stand up if you played in the Mayor's Cup? Okay, let's give it up. If you, so I know, the, I know the city manager and the mayor were there. If you missed this year's Mayor's Cup, you missed some of the best baseball I've seen in decades in Cambridge. I'm talking flawless, baseball, minor league and major league. You guys should be very, very proud of yourselves. And I'll tell you what, it said a lot about Cambridge baseball. So great job, you guys. At this time, North Cambridge and all of us would like to congratulate and thank Jonathan Blunt for his work in Cambridge Youth Sports. Hey, Rocky, stand up. We're the Rockies. Amir. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, Anthony, thank you so much. This uh, is quite an honor. Uh, I will start off by saying uh, I am not a, uh, unlike everybody here, I'm not a true Canterbridgean. I was not born and raised in Cambridge. Uh, my wife and I both grew up in Lexington. Uh, moved to Cambridge in uh, 97 so she could go to graduate school, and uh, we decided that this was a community that uh, we really enjoyed, so uh, we, we bought a house over in North, and like uh, Anthony says, is my, my son uh, tried out and didn't get picked. And uh, so when they called, uh, my wife answered the phone. They said, you know, unfortunately, he didn't get picked. And, you know, we really hate turning kids away. But unfortunately, there's, you know, so many teams and so many kids. And so she said, well, why don't you just add another team? And they said, we'd love to add another team, but we don't have anybody to coach. She said, you do now. Um, so that's kind of how I started. And, uh, I'll tell you, it's been a great, great experience for 14 years, and I hope to do it for, for many more. Uh, it's, it's, the parents are really the ones that need to, to, to really be thanked here. I mean, it's great, I work with the kids, it's very easy, but if I don't have the parents backing, if I don't have the parents coming down, making sure their kids are there, so all you kids there, you should really be thanking your parents. I mean it, I mean, the parents are the, really the driving force behind all, any of the leagues, whether it's Little League or Lacrosse or even Pop Warner. I mean, yeah, the coach is coach, but if the, if the parents aren't there to support the program, then the program's really are never gonna go anywhere. So, I mean, I really do think that all you guys out there, I think a round of applause should go to all the parents that are here. I mean, I really do think that's, that's really the key. Anyway, so I, you know, Found out I was getting this award and, and uh, found out I you know, had to give a speech. And I'm like talking to Tooch and you know, Tooch is, and I are both very nervous. And uh, so my wife is in commercial real estate and she's been involved in, in a bunch of organizations and she's continually, you know, multiple times a year has to give speeches in front of, you know, a thousand people. So I, I said to her, what do you do? I mean, how do you, I mean, it's nervous, it's nerve wracking. She said, well, the first thing you do is you, you don't look at anybody in the face. You look at the top of their heads. Because when they're you know, standing up on the podium and you're looking out over the audience, they, you're looking at the top of their heads, they think you're looking at them. So I said, okay, that's great. Well, so what else do you do? She goes, well, to try to ease my nervousness, I just imagine that everyone sitting in the audience is in their underwear. And I'm like, really? So I kind of looked at my friends in North Cambridge and I see John Crowley and Dave Kale and Eddie Hallett. I'm like, guys, no offense, but the last vision I want to see is you guys in your underwear. <laughs> anyway, um, I really do enjoy coaching the kids. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the co-workers I have say, 
Wait, your kids are in college. Why are you still doing this? He said, well, you got to understand. I'll give you a little story. We're in the second to last game of the year. And we've clinched first place. We know we're going to be going to the Mayor's Cup. And so I do the seven and nine-year-olds. Now, typically a seven-year-old, I'm not going to allow them to pitch because they just, they just can't get the ball to play. But I have this one little kid, and he's got a good, strong arm. So he's been begging me to, can I try pitching? So I'm like, what the heck? I throw him into pitch. Well, boom, 14 pitches were out of the inning. I'm like, this is great. Made a great catch of a pop-up, struck out a couple of kids. I'm like, unbelievable. Well, the very next inning, I have three kids who haven't got a hit all year. All three of them get hits. Now, the kids are all jumping up and down on the bench. Everyone's cheering. And, every, and I just look around, and all the parents are smiling. And I'm like, this is why you coach Little League. It's just, it's just, just to see that. So anyway, I really thank, I want to thank Anthony. Um, quite honored to take this. Uh, any of you kids out there, I'm going to tell you right now, you get that guy, Isaiah, as a teacher, you're going to have a very good teacher. I'm telling you right now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jonathan, very much. So Cambridge girls softball, um, it was probably 16, 15 years ago. Um, we're going to thank the city manager today. Was a program that was, again, a few people that had an idea. Peter Payak, uh, Robin Scott, Joe Grassi, uh, Scott Slater was involved early on. I know I'm going to miss a couple people um, who thought it should be done, that girls should have the same camaraderie and the same sports network, the support network that boys have. And it's worked. And if you see young women in Cambridge now, the relationships are stronger, the confidence is stronger, and they, they now have access to that same support network that we have always had growing up. Um, I'm not sure anybody has won more games than Rich Ferreira. Uh, if you see him riding on his bike across Cambridge, you see a man on a mission, on his way to a field to get kids prepared for the next game. Um, coaching is his life. And um, we want to make sure that, that we say thank you to him uh, for all the alley cats that have started a season and at a particular level and ended at a much different level. That's what life's about, working hard, preparing, getting better, and showing yourself that you can start today and get better for tomorrow. At this time, I, I, I know um, I knew Jess's daughter going way back as a great athlete at Ringin Latin. She personified what it was to be a girl softball player from Cambridge. Because there's girl softball players and there's girl softball players from Cambridge. She was hungry, gritty, resilient, and really started to set that tone uh, for girl softball along with the Del Vecchios that just really put us on the map. Uh, and so I want to thank Jess for being here because we're very proud of her. Uh, at this time, Galuccio Associates would like to honor Rich Ferreira. Come on up, Rich. I can't see anymore, so I have to use these glasses. <laughs> Good morning. For those of you who know me, I am not that into trophies or medals, but I am honored to receive this award. It all started in 1995 when my daughter, Jess Ferreira, quit dancing school. One day, we found some old softballs and a wooden bat and decided to go out and play. At first, she wasn't very good and had no idea that first day that would be the beginning of the way of life for her and for the next 20 years. Over the years, would be, she would become one of the best players I have ever coached. Through dedication and determination, she would take 200 swings, 100 ground balls, 50 fly balls every day at Gore Street Park. I cherish those memories because Gore Street Park was my backyard. We lived right across the street. <sighs> Give me a second. I started coaching the minor league team called the Ladybugs, and after a few years, Jess had moved up to the majors. I changed the name of the, la uh, the Ladybugs to the Alley Cats because of our cat Sinbad, who we rescued off the street. He would beat up dogs. That's how mean he was. <laughs> After coaching the minor league for a couple of years, the league needed a major league coach, so I volunteered to coach the Dolphins and the Alley Cats at the same time. 
for many years on Fridays, I would watch Jess play a high school game, then watch Watt would coach minor league game, and then after I would coach a major league game under the lights at St. Peter's. From, from the 10 years of coaching Jess on and off the field, I found out how to work with personality, people, players' personalities and identities, and I can best coach each one of them. Sometimes I need different, different things from a coach and everyone's skill level is different. I believe in muscle memory and by showing them the proper techniques and tweaking small aspects of the game, I have found that that is the most effective way to coach. I help out one of my closest friends, Mark Gardner, coach the 14U team. I also coach two other tournament teams this summer because I love coaching. I still coach the Alley Cats because my love for coaching and I love working with the girls, not just to develop them as softball players, but as individuals. I teach the game like I taught Jess, and I will always coach that way because it works for me and my players. It's the only way I know how to coach. I want to say thanks to all the players, parents, and coaches that I have had the pleasure of working with over the past 20 years. And I would like to con con congratulate the Alley Cats in the dynasty that they have created winning five championships without deflating any softballs. <laughs> Just kidding. I would not be here without them. They are truly an inspiration to me and some of, and some of them are great players. And I know they're going to change into, oh, sorry about that. And I'd just like to say a couple of things. Whitey, can you come up just for a second? Whitey said I could say this. I'm just going to let, I want to let you know. A couple of weeks ago, my daughter um, got a call from the Hall of Fame at Suffolk University. She's going to be inducted in, in October. She played 166 games in her career, about one major league season. And um, do you want me to give you the real numbers? Yeah. All right. All right. 227 hits, move over Ty Cobbs. 194 RBIs, move over Ted Williams. Sorry. They can still stay as, uh, as legends. 36 home runs, move over Willie Mays, and 1,073 slugging percentage. Sorry, Babe Ruth. She is the best there was, the best there is, and the best there ever will be. Uh, recipient was not a coach, but those of you who are involved in uh, youth sports know that administrating youth sports is a lot of work. Being a league president, I know uh, actually, can we have any of the league presidents? I know we have the Little League Commissioner, Mr. John Crowley is here. John, I know over the next few weeks you're going to be delivering some kind of an address about the future of uh, Cambridge Little League Baseball. We're looking forward to that. I want to have all the league presidents uh, administrators, stand up, because we want to give you a round of David Kale, stand up, please. Thank you. Getting baseballs, paying the umpires, getting uniforms, making sure the audit is done, making sure the leagues are run responsibly so the donors continue to donate. It's a ton of work, and it also can be somewhat controversial. So you need to be a financial expert, you need to be shameless, and you need to be a mediator. All those things. And leagues couldn't do it uh, without you, and we wouldn't be able to raise money without you, because if things go wrong, people don't want to donate money. Um, this, uh, this parent, who I know as a football parent, because her son Josh played for me uh, on the Patriot team in Pop Juana, one of my favorite kids, she has helped keep Central Little League alive uh, for the last 10 years, really 13 years. You would have seen her at the concession stand. You would have seen her doing uh, a lot of labor, and you probably didn't know that she was the president or she was getting ready for the banquet 
or keeping everyone in line and making sure everyone was paid, but she did everything that was necessary to keep that division going. Uh, today we have an opportunity. She, she didn't want to be here. She's very shy. We, uh, we did not want to forget what she contributed to Central Little League. It's our honor this morning to congratulate and thank Rebecca Lehman. Good morning. Anthony is right. I asked to decline, but he said that would offend him, but I didn't mind. Um, <laughs> Good morning. I'm truly honored to be chosen for this award. I'm proud to be a volunteer in our community and supporting our children. I am grateful that my son Josh and his friends had the opportunity to be part of Central Division. It was a fast 13 years, but I wouldn't change it for the world. I also would like to thank Mark Grant, Katie Lareko, Linda, Arthur Sutherland, Mark McGovern for all the hard work. Without them, I truly couldn't have done it. And this is the shortest speech today. So thank you. Tony just said, give her two plaques. Before, before we forget, you're gonna have a lot of fans here. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, do me a favor, please, take a look at the program. Read, read the bios, we work really hard on it, because um, it, it, it's a summary of what has been contributed by these honorees. I also want to make sure that we recognize the gold, silver, and bronze sponsors, but everybody who wrote a check, no matter how small, this organization has given out almost $100,000. Um, that's what this is. We want to honor, honor these uh, these coaches, but we also want to give back. So I want to say thank you to all uh, that are donating and please take a look at those sponsors on the front of the program because those are the people who are supporting youth sports in Cambridge. So thank you. I want to now uh, have this young man come up. Uh, started back in 1989, Steve, coaching the Orioles. Um, Cambridge Ringin Latin graduate, Went on, played Park League, Yockey League, baseball. Uh, clearly somebody who wakes up and goes to sleep thinking about baseball. Um, have always heard phenomenal things about, about uh, this coach. I know the kids love to play for him. It's, it's what he is all about. Um, he said to me, and this really resonated, that uh, learning how to be a better coach makes me a better man. And I think for all of us who do this, those moments of humility, the moments when you realize it's time to shut your mouth, time to smile, time to say good job, and just time, a time to get better as a coach makes us continue to try to be uh, better men. And I thought that, was, that just said it all. Um, at this time, we want to say thank you to the Orioles coach, Vernon McCarty. Everybody. I don't have a lot to say. I have a little bit. There's a couple of key things I would like to say. Thank you for this award and appreciate for recognizing me for what stuff I've done. But three things, Coach, and I remember. I'm always going to remember Ricky Salvia beating my top team. I think my personal top team ever, I think. I've never seen a player, major league or anywhere else, make this play. He had to dive 20 feet to, to catch this ball, but he did. And I'm not gonna forget that. I'm never gonna forget Carlos Aquino, we was in Florida. I expect him to be average to decent, but no, he shut the team down. He pitched very well, he hit very well. The other person, not here right now, had 17 strikeouts in the 17 and seven inning game, which is, you know, tough. <laughs> other than that, I mean, I thank you. I love doing what I do. Some of you young kids, maybe in the future you'll get to have me as a coach and you'll see the joy I like to give out. I wanna make sure you enjoy your experience playing baseball, being part of the Cambridge organization that is literally in Babe Ruth and whatever else afterwards. Um, like I said, this message is gonna be pretty short. I thank you guys. Appreciate everything you guys have done. 
Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, I know I'm gonna kill, be killed for this. I'm sorry, I have to thank my family because once, yeah. <laughs> they give up a lot of stuff dealing with me and my time coaching you guys. They give up a lot of stuff. Thank you. By the way, I just realized Louis Di Pasquale did show up. And I want to introduce him. Louis, would you stand up, please? He's here, everyone. Just stand up and give a wave. Seriously. There he is, everyone. Louis Di Pasquale. This year, we lost an incredible friend and coach and parent. Um, for those of you who've been coming to this breakfast, there was somebody that, that was always here with his son, Joseph, because they loved youth sports and they loved baseballs. And if you listen to the two of them talk, um, it would be like, you know, Lou Gorman talking to uh, Larry Lucchino. It was like professor baseball talk, uh, high level baseball talk. Who do you think is going to pitch later on today? What are, what are we going to do if it rains? What's that substitute rule again, Dad? They were like so deep into baseball, it was their life. Brian um, started out helping because of his son, but as someone who coached with Brian, it wasn't about just Joseph. It was about every kid on that team, making sure that every kid got into the game, making sure that every kid had a uniform and felt part of it. Uh, Brian Murphy, to me, epitomized what it was to be a parent coach. Yeah, he came into it because of his son, but he was much, much more than that to the other players in the league. And when you watch Joseph and Brian, it was everything that we think about with youth sports. Rich just defined it. It's, there's no greater time spent than with your own kid playing a sport, teaching a sport, learning a sport. Um, Brian's relationship with Joe and Molly, his relationship with Kate, his work in West Cambridge Little League, which by the way, Mr. Manager, probably came before his work in the city. His kids were first. He didn't miss a game. You know, he didn't make excuses. He wanted his kids to see him there at all times. So we lost Brian this year. It was shocking. It was tragic. We're all still reeling from it. Um, you know, we're not going to fill that void, but we wanted to create an award. Uh, West Cambridge dedicated the season to him this year. I want to thank Steve and all the coaches who supported that. We wanted to do an award that carries Brian's legacy forward as a parent and a coach. Kate is down the Cape, which I encouraged her to go and stay uh, and, and take some respite. Uh, but this year, we're going to honor somebody who, in my mind, symbolizes that. Um, you can go up to the park and see Jim Peck with Allie and Quinn, which I've been seeing, I don't know, for six years now. But if another kid comes along and wants some VP or wants some instruction, Jim Peck's going to take that kid under his wing and give him some or her some practice too. Every kid is just as important as his. So at this time, uh, we want to shout out to Cubs Nation, where Brian Murphy started um, when, the, when very few teams beat the Cubs uh, and they had the biggest parties after every game. That's all I'm, I will say. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Peck. Anthony just came over to me and said, Jim, you have uh, three to four minutes. <laughs> he just took five. <laughs> I don't know where that leaves me at minus two. <laughs> In any case, uh, thanks very much to Anthony and uh, Galuccio Associates for this, this kind award. It's uh, truly an honor to receive this award. I'm, uh, I'm more honored even to be mentioned in the same name, in the same sentences as Brian Murphy. Uh, he was a, a gentleman a coach, a civil servant, and someone who everybody respected in the community. Brian represented everything that's good about West Cambridge baseball. He was always good-natured, fair, helpful, and nurturing to the kids. In fact, he treated every player as if he or she were his own son or daughter. With Brian, there was never a disparaging comment. His message was always positive. To quote Louie, 
You can do this! <laughs> His attitude was infectious and difficult to replicate. I wish I could be more like Brian Murphy. I always thought Brian was like the golden retriever, friendly and gentle, to my Jack Russell Terrier, short, snappy, and biting. But I guess every dog has its day, and this is mine. But I'm no Brian Murphy. As good as Brian was on the field, he was twice the player off it. An accomplished professional who graduated from Harvard and the University of Chicago Law School, an outstanding civil servant who was the assistant city manager and beloved by his co-workers, a loving husband to Kate, his wife, and perhaps as his biggest fan. A wonderful father to his two kids, Joseph and Molly. Joseph, your dad would be so proud of your season in Babe Ruth. And Molly, Brian would be equally proud of your acceptance to Williams College this fall. Brian and I did share some, of, some common thread. A love of baseball as a lifetime Red Sox fan who had to endure many difficult seasons, 67, 75, and 86. A loving family, a love of family. Val, and Quinn, and Allie, I can't tell you how much you mean to me. And a willingness to give back to the community in which you live. For me, trips to the baseball field are easy. I've always loved the game. In fact, I have two kids, the fact that I have two kids who love the game as well as icing on the cake. Baseball is the endless summer, a game that always brings, you, brings out your inner child, and most importantly, a game that allows you to engage with your neighbors in a relaxing setting, a chance to meet new friends. There are so many of you who share my feelings, and all of you deserve a piece of this award for your tireless efforts in helping kids learn this wonderful game. There are many Jim Pecks. They go by different names. Gooch, Tooch, Ned, Jerry, Rob, Robert, Steve, Scott, John, Colleen, Augie, Tom, among them. Your love of baseball, family, and community service will keep the memory of Brian Murphy alive for generations to come. Thank you. That was awesome. For me, whenever I enter a roster on a Bay State website, I think of Brian. When I look at that roster and I have 20 kids and I got to figure out how am I going to get each of them into at least a game or two, I think of Brian. He and I would spend hours talking about that stuff and he loved every minute of it. Um, there's a baseball god and Brian's sitting next to him right now and they think the Sox are coming back, Steve. I guarantee you that. Uh, so, uh, to Brian, we miss you and we love you, but we're not going to forget you. And, and uh, Tobin Field uh, will always remember you, and your spirit will be with us every time, especially in those hot summers when we need it most. Uh, Jim, Brian would be very proud of what you do, and I know that he would think that it was completely appropriate for you to be here, and that was awesome. Thank you. As we all know, Anthony Tucinati has become a big name in Cambridge, okay? Even Diane Pinto said, what a nice guy you are. Even Diane Pinto said that. Uh, let's get this party started right now. Anybody who played in any capacity was either played for or recruited by Anthony Tucinati to play baseball, please, or football or Football, baseball, or basketball? Stand up. Maybe hockey. Okay. So, so, when I talked about rosters, one of the things we love most about Tooch is he makes promises and commitments with little regard to things like how many roster spots, where you live, what time you are in school even. If you, 
walk by Anthony Tucinati, you will be recruited. That's just a, that's just a fact of life. And he will report back that you are a phenomenal athlete, probably going to make the pros and one of the greatest players he's ever seen. Every one of you. That's Anthony Tucinati. And that's how he sees kids. That's how we, and that's how we all should see kids. Whether you're having a bad day or not, this guy's reporting back, you're a star. Um, Tuch has brought new life to West Cambridge Little League. He has reinvigorated um, an aging CYO basketball program at St. Peter's. I played there, I thought my years were about it when we were winding down, brought it to great new heights. They've won back-to-back -back championships all over the South Shore. They're killing teams. Um, I don't know how he does it. I don't think he could do it without his wife, Tricia, who keeps him uh, somewhat organized. <laughs> and if you think about being able to do all this without knowing how to open an email, this is what, <laughs> This is greatness. This is greatness. Seriously. Um, all seriousness. You look out and you just see families like the Delinos. I said to Kendrick last night, you remember Kendrick, when I said, your greatest moments of your life were playing for the Mets, weren't they? And Kendrick gave me that scowl and then when you play for Tooch, you're going to have fun, and you're going to have a lifelong friend uh, for the rest of your life. We had him out at Pop Warner. That's a whole nother story. Again, can your son play? He said yes. Trisha hadn't signed off. Next thing you know, he's running between hockey and other, and David could play two nights a week. Tooch, we had fun, didn't we? Hey, you just keep being you. Don't say no, because it ain't going to change now, buddy. Just keep being yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, on three, I want to say thank you, Tooch. One, two, three. Thank you, Tooch. Come on up here, buddy. Thank you, Anthony and Galuccio Associate members. I'm honored to receive this award. Thank you to all my former and current players for being here today. It's a great showing. I'd like to thank West Cambridge and former league president Eddie Chasen and Louis D. Pasquale to give me the opportunity to coach the Mets. I'd like to thank all the great assistant coaches I've had through the years. Without their help, they I would not succeed. I feel so fortunate to be a part of this league. I feel I have so many great memories and built tremendous relationship with the families I've coached. Now, it's hard to believe that my first players are now going off to college. Uh, the best feeling is when a former player comes to the field to speak to the current team or help out in the practice. Thank you to all my former players and families. It's been my pleasure to coach your kids. Basketball. I'd like to thank Ted Hoff for allowing me the opportunity to get involved in St. Peter CYO basketball. Without his longtime support, that program would not exist. Uh, I'd like to thank Mark Grant, who came along when his boys played, brought great enthusiasm and interest to this program, and had great success. I'd also like to thank our current coaches who have helped grow this program. Arthur Sutherland, Dave Barry, Doug Feingold, Terry Doyle, Danny Flaherty, and special assistant to every team, Jerry Dotton. Thank you for your hard work and commitment to this program. I've loved every minute of coaching, youth sports, the practices, the emails, <laughs> the battles between Tooch and Gooch. Uh, to the parents, I hope I've done a good job in teaching uh, the game, respecting your children, and giving a positive experience in youth sports. I hope you have as many fond memories as I do. To my wife, th thank you for uh, all your help, and to my boys for supporting me throughout the years. Thank you. You can't ensure 
kids' success, but you can make sure that we show them that we have the confidence and the love for them by making sure that our facilities are superior. Ladies and gentlemen, let's say thank you to our city manager, Coach Rich Rossi. Thank you all very much. And let me, let me begin by saying this is what I consider a real honor in this city when you're recognized by the group of people that's here. I think you feel like maybe you've done something right. All of the kids that I grew up with, we were all in the same place, right? Our families, they didn't have a lot of money. You know, when we go to Sacco's bowling, we couldn't rent the shoes, we used to have to bowl in our socks. Hockey game for us were uh, shoes and rubbers, nobody could afford skates. So we used to play hockey on rubbers. It was great. Never fell down. And you know, we spent all day and all night in the park. So you know, as young kids, we were allowed to stay in the park till midnight, because we all lived right around the neighborhood. And if your parents knew you were in the park, that was great. But, but what did I see in the park growing up? So in Donnelly Field, there's one thing you couldn't find, and that was a blade of grass. It's quite amazing to me. So we played on dirt. It was broken glass. There were cans. The, the holes at second base and home plate were incredibly deep. But we felt like we were rich because, you know, this was the greatest place to be. And if you weren't there by 8.30 in the morning, you might not get in the games. So we spent all summer playing baseball. I mean, I played football at Donnelly Field, tag football, until I was 41 years old and just couldn't run anymore. And, and uh, we used to go to the Harrington School gym every Tuesday night. And those were the places where you, all your friends met and you had all your fun. And that, that's what you looked forward to. So whenever I had the opportunity as a city official to do things to make those places better, I jumped on it. Because I knew what that meant to me as a kid. And to think that I could do something or help be part of something that was going to make improvements like that was more than a dream for me. So I remember all, all my friends from Donnelly Field would get together once a month down at the Hacienda. And uh, I was so proud of the Donnelly Field rehab that we worked on. So I invited all the guys from Donnelly Field, most of them who didn't live there anymore, down to Donnelly Field after we had pizza and a few beers at the Hacienda, and I showed them the field. These guys couldn't believe it. Because when they were there, the, the, the wooden poles were leaning like this. Half the lights didn't work. You know, there were no fences. I showed it to them. They loved it. They thought it was better than Fenway Park. So now I'm in a position, and, I, and we're going to redo, we're going to do some work at the high school, and we say, why don't we throw the war memorial in there? And we did. And we got the war memorials back. It, it, it looks like a college facility. Absolutely amazing. And we were able to do the same at St. Peter's Field. When we did Danahy Park, we did St. Peter's Field. When we did Russell Field, David Keel, please do Como, please do Como. We did Como, right? And we took care of Como. So we, we as a city and as an administration, really never passed up these opportunities to give kids in this city what they deserve. So this city has a lot of riches, and we deserve to have the best facilities. And that's what we've tried to do. And I'm very proud of that. Where I live in Watertown, I'm about 400 yards from the, from the baseball field. And if the wind's blowing the right way, I can hear the voices of the ball players and the coaches. And one Saturday afternoon on a beautiful day, I hear this voice, Wilma, come on! I said, that can't be. You know, it was like that scene out of Mighty Joe Young when they first realized they, that they heard a gorilla in a part of the African uh, wilderness where there were no gorillas. I said, that's Louis D. Pasquale. I run there. And there he is charging out of the dugout. With, with a uniform that looked like the Oakland A's. It was tremendous, right? And he's blasting the ump, and he's blasting the, the players. That's vintage Louie. I played on the very first Cambridge Pop Warner football team. And we used to practice at Donnelly Field until uh, daylight savings time, and then we'd move to St. Peter's. And our coach was a guy named Vito Ananis. Vito Ananis was BC Hall of Fame. I think he played in the uh, Sugar Bowl or Cotton Bowl. Vito uh, played in the NFL, and he was the greatest coach. What a mentor. And he used to tell us there were three things you had to be. You had, if you wanted to live your life the right way and be a great athlete, you got to live like one, you got to play like one, and you got to act like one. And then every time we went to practice, he'd pick somebody out, and he'd say, what's our motto? 
inevitably some kid would say, ah, you gotta sleep like one, and make you do the lap of the park three or four times. But that's the kind of guy I remember as an inspiration, right? And that's what all of you are, you know? I, I kid my friends over there in North Cambridge, uh, David Kale and Crowley, and I say, it's amazing how two guys who only played four innings of baseball in their life can be coaches for so many years. But that's not what's important. What's important is they have the heart for it, and they have the passion for it, and they hate the other coaches and they want to beat them. That's, that's, that's what that's all about. So it's a city like this that's made up of people like you who do these great things. Keep up the good work and do this forever, believe me. Thank you. CRLS athletes that came today that are still here, please stand. High school athletes. And, thank you. And notice they stayed until the end. I want to thank my sister, Lissa, who really helped uh, come through for this breakfast. Just so, so what, I, what I figured out during the course of the breakfast, Louie knew he had a wedding. There was a coup d'etat between Louie and my sister to postpone the breakfast. And Louie was blaming it on my mother, but now I realize it was because he couldn't be here. We foiled that coup. We still pulled off the breakfast. Lisa, I want to thank you. The board, the Galucho Associates is all of you. All we do is administer it. It's all of you. You are Galucho Associates. I think we're going to be close to 100,000 uh, this year, which is awesome. Every month, every couple months, we get a new organization that reaches out to us, and we're able to give them some kickstart money and help them without a lot of bureaucracy, uh, and it's awesome. So. I want to thank all of you. I know it's hard, Saturday morning. We always push the start time back a little bit. We try to get you out of here. If it wasn't for you, this wouldn't be a success. Be proud of yourselves for getting up and coming to this uh, this morning. We will help a lot of organizations and young people because of it. And most importantly, we'll see you next year at the 20th annual uh, Youth Sports Volunteer Recognition Breakfast. Thank you.